What's up, guys? I'm Tana Mojo, and Zach Sang just did a lot of charity work by having me on his show. Um, see what we talked about. It was juicy. Let's do this. Zach Sang Show. Hello, beautiful human. Oh, my God. Does that mean your life? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have Dan here, and we welcome Tana Mojo. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Hi. Stop. <laughs> Oh my god, my palms are sweating so much. I'm freaking out. You make me so nervous. What? You, you are like the interviewer of our generation. You give the best interview ever, and you are doing such charity work by having me today. You know what? I, I all I, of you are. That's I, not true. I thank you for your it kind is. words, <laughs> but you got to know something. You coming and doing our show is a version of charity work. That's so f***ing hilarious. In the world of YouTube and in the world of culture uh -huh. at large right now, you, Tana Mojo, whether that's your real last name or not. It's Paul now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, you are on another level. Is it weird to cope with, or do you feel like from 2015, 2016, you've kind of been preparing for this moment? Okay, first of all, you are Zach f***ing Sang, and I can't even believe you're saying those words to me right now. I'm literally seizing. I need to calm down. To the people at home, by the way, I'm really gross right now. I'm, like, super, like, sick and nasally and freaking out, and sorry. I think you're beautiful, and I oh, love that. Oh, my God, I love you so fucking much. Stop. <laughs> Um, your question. I should answer it. This is an interview. Um, 2015, 2016. Yeah, it's yeah. it's cool the climb, I guess, that I've had. I've had a second to kind of, like, prepare for things, which I feel very lucky. I couldn't even imagine being, like, someone like Bad Baby, like, an overnight, yeah. like, completely, like, zero to 100. I don't know how they, like, prepare for that. So it's cool that I kind of grew up, like, obsessed with YouTube and kind of, like, wanting to be a YouTuber and, like, Growing with it, I guess, with the platform in a way. Was your first video actually the hairdresser video? You venting, or did you post stuff before that? Um, I posted like like probably like three or four. I wanted to daily vlog, which is hilarious <laughs> because I suck at everything, and the thought of me uploading every day on time is so funny. Um, and then I I don't know. I just did a rant, and people liked me angry and so, angsty in fifteen. But you, you attempted <laughs> these vlogs at one point. Yeah, yeah, just like a day in my life. Like I worked retail and I thought people cared about that, which is hilarious. I don't think you can find them anymore though because I like, I but, wanted that gone. What was it about that work that you were like, I, I don't want people to see this? It wasn't that. It just like wasn't interesting. Like I just like was such a narcissistic little 15 year old that thought my like day to day mundane life was so interesting that I could like daily vlog, which is hilarious. And then, I don't know, I ended up really finding a passion for like storytelling, story time. <sighs> I grew up in Vegas, a lot of crazy happened to me so that was like my thing well th that's what i find so interesting is yeah. one your ability to tell stories two your ability to captivate through the camera because you're you, exact saying <laughs> yeah but you stare right into that lens Anna, and you really bring somebody in yeah like no. <laughs> what is a camera to you how do you see this thing dude I, that's a really interesting question you asked the best question um i don't know it it started as just like a way to vent like I, like, hated my life. Like, I had no friends. I wanted to, like, be that person that, like, someone who's, like, 15 and is, like, the weird kid could, like, resonate with. I wanted to be their friend. So a camera just became, like, second nature to me, I guess, but you know? Did you want to be that, 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 the friend to the kid who didn't have friends because you were that kid? Yeah, absolutely. I was always the weird kid. And I feel like that was never, like, normal. It was never cool to be the weird kid back then. It wasn't until I found someone like Shane Dawson who was, like, oh, my God, like, it's okay to be the fucking weird kid. It's okay to make these jokes. It's okay to be fucked up in the head and have a fucked up life and whatever. And it's like, that was the first time I felt like I like could have a purpose, you know? If like the weird kids could like resonate with me and like all the shit I guess I've been through. I don't know. Wait, I, I love it because <laughs> somebody who needed friends turns to the internet. For, yeah. it, it's a mutual. For friends. It's, yes. It's, yeah. It's a mutually beneficial relationship here because. Absolutely. Do you, how do you see somebody who watches your vlogs? How do you look at them? That's like what I feel like my fans, they understand to an extent, but I'm like, you are my best friends. Like you are my family. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Growing up, like obviously my like home life sucked. I literally moved out when I was like 16 years old. You know, like I hated it so much. That's I just like, so I had scary. friends in high school and I with them, but I always felt like misunderstood. I felt like people didn't understand me. Like I was just f***ing weird and f***ed up in the head, you know? Did you feel like so you had like, to conform to anything in high school? I feel like I did the exact opposite. I was always like rebelling, which sucked. Like I hated authority, I think, just because like, you know, my parents were f***ing. <laughs> Why do yeah. you say that? Because I watched your, your <laughs> parents reacting to your Hefner video. Oh my God, you've seen everything. You're such an icon. <laughs> King of research. I mean, like, I, 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 they seem very normal. They seem supportive. Yeah, they are more so now, I think, because they're, like, probably sorry for just being bad parents. I guess I look back now and, like, realize it's more so that they just, like, weren't fit to be parents. 
And it's something that I think as you get older, you, like, almost feel empathy for your parents because you're like, well, they're just people too, you know? Like, that kind of thing, you know, I guess. But they just, they weren't it. <laughs> when do you realize that? That your parents are just humans just like you? I don't know. I was probably, like, 18, 19. It, it's more so as I had to, like, face the real world and, like, realize that we're all kind of products of our childhood and how f***ed up they were, like, lack thereof. You know what I mean? And, like, that, that's just, like, what life is and, like, if our parents were shitty, it's because their parents might have been shitty. Or if our parents were great, it's because their parents might have been Like, we're all just kind of products of that. And we're all just humans, like, trying to figure out how to exist, you know? In that moment, is that, like, one of the moments that you realize you're an adult? Because that's a very intense thing to realize. Like, I your parents so. are just people like you. I think so. That's what's kind of weird about YouTube for me because I feel like I became an adult, like, in the face of everyone else. Like, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people have that chance to, like, become an adult, not on camera, not yeah. in front of the world. But, like... I feel like remembering, I like, I remember remembering that moment, like being like, wow, like I'm becoming an adult. I'm realizing these things like all while like vlogging every day and like touring and like, you know what I mean? The, so like, it was just it, it, weird, I guess. That's why I've made a lot of mistakes and probably I'm so scandalous because I literally like grew up. You just lived. Online. Yeah. Do you, it, has there been any moments throughout this journey so far where you've regretted this decision to dedicate your life to your audience? No, because I think they saved my life. I don't think I'd be alive if it was for YouTube 100%. Really? Yeah. I think I absolutely hated my life. I had no purpose. There was nothing I wanted to live for. Like, I just, like, I remember literally being, like, 14, 15 years old, being like, why am I alive? Like, what is my purpose on this planet? I don't have one. Like, there's nothing I want to do. Everything that people, like, do for a living doesn't entice me. Like, I'm going to live my whole life being, like, a drone, like, sitting at a desk, like, miserable. Like, there's there's nothing. Like, I just felt so, like... You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. What a downer no. interview. No, no, no. <laughs> By the way, I totally understand it. It's it's because it's it, it's like just becoming a, a cog in the wheel, right? Yeah, it's like exactly. Doing what society dictates for you, doing what exactly. society feels like this is your path, which is working a desk job or going to high school, then going yeah. to college and doing all these things that I just kind never, of yeah. Wasn't I just, for you. I never felt like it like I was made for that. And it wasn't until like I started making YouTube videos and I realized like I've gone through or am going through, like I can use it to help people. I can use my pain. I can use my fucking f ups or whatever to like, you know, help other people. That was the moment that I realized like this is my purpose in life, which I think inadvertently like saved my life, you know? Yeah, because it's a mutually yeah. beneficial relationship. Yeah. How Kate. far into your career did you start feeling like, you know, this is it? Like this is what I need to be doing? I knew like from the moment that I really like uploaded my first YouTube video. Like I think that that like, feeling of joy first of all that like rush that excitement of taking that risk and like being yourself and like that type of thing like I instantly kind of knew it was for me if that makes sense even though um, the first one was boring yeah but, but I still knew I liked it I liked creating I liked the idea of like okay I'm gonna make these funnier I'm gonna edit them I'm gonna say this I'm gonna talk about all of these things that I wouldn't tell anyone else because it's too fucking weird you know and then like I don't know I guess meeting my fans would be a good answer though as I started to meet my fans and be like wow these fucking crazy people are just like me you know <laughs> was like damn cool you built a community of people like tana <laughs> yeah which is scary and i'm sorry to the rest of the world <laughs> but uh yeah yeah wow what a ride it's been for you though because yeah. we talk about the hairdresser video that's the first one that you still have on your main channel that is yeah. accessible to everybody but your most you know that is so crazy well your most popular is the hefner music video it, yeah and and uh, by the way fascinating <laughs> music video but even more fascinating watching your parents watch it yeah that was crazy that was a crazy era like the hefner era of my life was so weird what why is that is it because it was like your maybe your first song i think it was your first song right yeah yeah it was my first song right, right? I, I don't I, th I think I made some other songs. Jordan just not listening, me turning around for his <laughs> advice, and he's just like fucking like face tuning. I, I was <laughs> um, himself. Period. Um, but yeah, the Hefner era was weird. I just kind of woke up one day and wanted to be a rapper. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so then kind of failed. <laughs> like, I'm not really a rapper. But what, <laughs> what fuels that? And and by the way, what fuels music in general? Is it this want to actually make music, or is it knowing that it could get views? I mean. So this was like during the like Lil Pump like era, Lil oh. Pump, Lil Xan, SoundCloud rappers blowing up. And I think it was kind of this overall millennial consensus moment where we all were like, wow, like we could all you do this? can just say like, yeah, I came in like a boss. Yeah, I flex Rick Ross over and over again and make a platinum record. Like you can't not <laughs> on Lil Pump. I love him. But <laughs> I'm saying like 
it, like it was a moment where I was like, damn, I want to try this too. And then I made Hefner and it got a lot of streams. It got a lot of views. It fucking blew up. People, Dude, it's your most popular video to date. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Shout out Bella for sure. Um, but <laughs> um, I think that was like the moment that I realized like, okay, like if I can get streams, then I should make something more meaningful. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, if I can get streams and I can get views, I should try to make things that I'm putting my heart into or, like, you know, continuing telling the story. At the end of the day, like, at heart, I'm a storyteller. So, like, I love writing. That's, like, my thing, I guess. So, like, if I can do that through music and it's going to get streams, it, it slowly turned into something I was passionate about. I understand it started that. as, like, a publicity, like, fun, like, moment, you know? Hey, beautiful human, real quick. If you're considering going back to school, you should ask yourself the following questions. Do you need the flexibility to take classes on your schedule? Do you have college credits that you need transferred? Do you want to earn a quality degree from a world-renowned university? If you answered yes to any of these questions, Arizona State University could be the perfect school for you. Arizona State University offers 200 highly ranked degree programs 100% online. You're going to earn the same degree as you would on campus from wherever you are on your schedule. Plus, ASU Online accepts most transfer credits. If you want more information, text my name, Zach, to 35517. That is Zach to 35517. So you can learn for yourself why the Wall Street Journal ranks ASU fifth in the nation for producing the best qualified graduates and why 87% of ASU grads are recruited within, 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 90 days of graduation. That's a big number. 87% of the graduates. They get a job in 90 days. Learn to grow, learn to succeed, and learn to thrive at Arizona State University. To learn more about ASU online degrees, text Zach to 35517. That is Z-A-C-H to 35517. <sighs> Knowledge is power. What What fuels this idea that if you want to do something you can do it is it the fact that like on the internet essentially that is true right if you want to be a rapper you have the means to kind of create a rap song and then put it out there into the world yeah it's i've always just been a very like spur of the moment risk-taking person which can definitely backfire not saying it can't <laughs> but like um i don't know like if you want something go get it or at least try yeah i'd rather try and fail i mean depending on the situation but how does what you want, how has it changed since the Hefner era? Um, I mean, I guess now I'm a little more passion fueled, like in the sense that like I probably wouldn't put out more music that like I didn't think had like a, a message or was written behind. Like I want to turn like my pain or emotion into like art now more so than just like get streams and views in a fucking bunny hat, you know, <laughs> like it's different, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. And now I feel like I'm a little less impulsive, too. I'd probably, like, overthink that decision a little more. But that's a good thing. Yeah, but what shapes this new, let's take a second to think about it, version of you? I feel like there's always a new version of me. I'm always, like, ever-changing and ever-growing. And I never want to be like, I'm the new Tana. Like, I'm not going to, like, <laughs> f*** up tomorrow. You know? Like, I don't know. Just f***ing up, though. Like, growth you know making mistakes like every mistake i've fucking ever made has been in front of the whole world so it's kind of like shape up or ship out you have to grow you know but see like, blessing or a curse blessing because i think that if i if i never did youtube you know and i lived a regular life like i would just be so much less wise of a person i think i would have grown so much less because it's like like, like I said, I moved out when I was 15. I Or like 16. I dropped out when I was 15. My parents didn't really raise me. Jordan, 100%, without a doubt, hands down, raised me. Like, he literally saw me, and I was like a dying bird on the side of the road. And he was like, damn, I need to save this bitch's life, you know? <laughs> and like, raised me. And like, in, in the three years of like 16 to 19, Jordan taught me like everything your parents should probably teach you your whole life. You know what I mean? But are your parents nervous that you're off with this guy making YouTube videos? Do they care? Do they not care? I don't know. It, it's not even that they... Obviously, they're asking questions and they, like, care and, like, whatever. But, like, I don't know. Like, I was, six, like, 15 years old and they were telling me, like, get the f*** out. Like, you're worthless. Like, we hate you. Like, you know what I mean? So it was, like, I kind of was, like, okay, I'm going to get the f*** out. Like, it, it was to a point where it was, like, I didn't owe them that. I didn't care if, what they thought, yeah. you know? And it was, like, I knew that he was far smarter than they ever could be and was going to better me in so many ways that, like, they never could, which obviously is a risk and, like... You know, but it's like, but when your parents are telling you, when your parents are saying yeah. get out, you have no other option. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Do you still talk to your parents? Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you regret that? 
I don't regret it because it's like, what do you do, you know? Like, I think they're really f***ed up in the head. So again, like getting older is just like feeling empathetic for these people, like in, in a weird f***ed up way. But obviously there's always that part of me that's like, damn, like y'all sucked. But, like, I don't I don't even know how to explain it but, in any other way. But I wouldn't be like who I am. That's it. If that, it wasn't. If they didn't say get the f*** out. I wouldn't. Yeah, you want to be here. I wouldn't have the life that I have, which I'm very grateful for in so many ways. And I probably would have never been the weird kid i probably would have never gravitated to someone like shane dawson who had a fucked up life too i probably never would have sat down in front of the camera and like you know no matter what like i still have a lot of growing to do but knowing i've like helped a lot of people and like Makes teens and it. young kids and like saved their lives and help them be confident in who they are no matter what that is makes it like what i went through worth it i guess you know i don't know what would you say are some of the biggest mistakes you've made everything <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I she rips out a whole she, she rips no, out a I scroll. take out a scroll Lil Nas at the f***ing VMA it's just me with every mistake I've ever f***ing made um, everything I'm really impulsive and I make really bad decisions sometimes I'm getting a lot better at it but yeah I made a lot of bad mistakes I, I don't even know what do you learn from this wedding sorry you couldn't <laughs> make it <laughs> um, no you it's okay that you stayed home I promise um, what did I learn from this wedding that's a hard question um I definitely learned that I'm still a little impulsive, obviously, even when I try not to. But you're still young. You're 21. Yeah, I, I learned that I'm the type of person that, like, really lives in the moment. And, like, I if I'm very happy in literally, like, one minute. Literally the other day, um, Jake and I were riding with Logan to um, his, like, KSI fight boxing thing, whatever. I'm just supporting my f***ing man who's supporting his brother. But Logan was like, how are you guys? And I was like, well, in this minute, like, we're f***ing doing great. <laughs> And it sucks because Jake is very much like me in that regard. So it's like in that fucking minute, that's what we wanted to do. And like we were super happy. And like, yeah, it's not conventional. And it was kind of just like an adult fucking prom if you think about it. <laughs> but like <laughs> we were happy. I don't know. We still are. I, I don't know. Yeah. Do, do you like, okay, you like judging happiness in the moment. But like. I don't, I, it, but it definitely taught me to maybe think a little more long term in the future. It definitely taught me the but adverse you're not, of. Are you legally married? No. And are you. Do, so I guess it's a ceremony of like love, which is also fing weird because it's like. <laughs> but here's the deal you're also in an open relationship and you've lived an open relationship life for a while, right? Kind of open. It's complicated. <laughs> but, and this I think is, we decide which days are open. Yeah, you <laughs> just live in the present, top to bottom. Literally, it, like the minute, down to and everything it's bad well, okay we're getting better though can you explain to somebody like me who is completely naive to the relationship anything might be better <laughs> <laughs> dude I, I have my own set of problems yeah more stemmed in loneliness i, okay. I feel like question for you okay, when's the shoot. last time you were lonely all the time really Still. yeah absolutely you know you still have those moments with yourself where you're like damn like you know, when people don't understand you on certain things or you miss people that did really understand you on, like, a deeper level or just things, you know what I mean? Like, and I think just in this world, sometimes there's so much going on around you and it's all happening and people love you and, like, they're sucking the fart out of your ass. But in reality, when you <laughs> sit back down and you're like, how many real people do I really have in my life? You know, like, that can be a very lonely feeling. How many people are around me because of, you know, how Who it benefits them? Yeah. Yeah. So how often do you, want. how do you, how often do you recalibrate yourself? And have those moments. Um, I, I'm a really big, like, distraction person, which is really bad. And I'm learning that as that's another thing I might be learning right now is that, like, I I often feel worse when I'm, like, recalibrating, when I'm all alone. I take that time. Don't get me wrong. But I love, like, keeping my friends around me, working to stay busy, making content that makes me laugh, making the best of the moment, like, just distracting myself it's it's definitely not healthy don't do it kids <laughs> yeah but, but see that's the thing like you, you it's almost you crave the distraction yeah because maybe you don't like being alone yeah i don't i mean a part of me is just like very easily bored very adhd just like i always want to be like super stimulated i'm very like extroverted huh. but then there's just a part of me that like wants to keep going as fast as i can but also like i don't know it's a lot of things i feel like in this industry, we all have that, like, demon in the back of our head. Like, how long is this going to last for? Like, do everything. Be everywhere. Fucking, you know what I mean? Like, yes. soak it up while you have it. And I'm, like, the worst do for that. Like, I never sleep. I'm fucking crazy. Do you see, like, a ticking clock of your relevancy? I think that's unhealthy. So I try not. Like, if I, if I find my mind, like, slipping into that pattern, I try to just be like, that's 
you know, that's not what it's about. That's not why you started it. You're passionate about making people smile, even if it's f***ing one person. So, like, at the end of the day, go back to that. And, like, if you're putting out, like, art, you know, if you're putting out things that, yeah. like, you know, whatever art f***ing is in today's millennial generation, even if it's just a comedy <laughs> video, you know, but if... It's a collection of different you're stuff. You're putting out your art, I guess. Who the f*** are we to even say what art is? Yeah, oh my god, I'm so artsy. Oh. <laughs> so... Was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to anyone listening to this right now. By the way, really beautiful sentiment that you just shared because it is knowing that like joy comes from just bringing happiness to anybody. Even yeah, if it's that's just like my main source person. of joy, really. Like, it, it which goes, I don't know if that's a good thing. I know it's you know find it within yourself, but like there's nothing that makes me happier than making someone laugh or making someone smile. You know, that's often how I fall in love with people. Literally, just like I love them so much, like making them happy and it dark. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I feel like you need somebody to fall in love with you, like somebody, somebody to woo you, <laughs> Me too. somebody to come after you? Yeah, but I'm also f-ed up in the regard that things that are so fucking easy, like I don't always want them. I told uh, me too. Yeah, I like, never want the easiest option. Yeah, like someone throwing themselves in love with you or a big oh. ass challenge. Like, what do you fucking want? <laughs> like, yeah. I just uh, so how'd you win over that. Jake? What? How'd you win over Jake? I'm like, did I? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, did you want to? No, I'm just joking. Um, I don't know. Jake and I are really similar. I I don't know if it's a healthy thing, but I think that a lot of our demons are the same. You know, like we both just dealt with a lot of the same things growing up and we deal with a lot of the same insecurities and a lot of the same thoughts and we're just so similar. And I feel like we both like ha- had not ever really met people like in the opposite sex we were like attracted to that like, were similar to us. Like, we talk about things and relate to things that I feel like no one else... Like, there are moments where I'm talking to Jake and I'm like, no one else in the world can relate to this the way that you can. What is it? What What are you... What, what can he connect with you on that Noah cannot, that Bella cannot, that I cannot? Okay, whoa. Um. Well, I mean, and I, I might connect with them in similar ways, but I feel like Jake and I just, like... In the regard of like our childhoods, like our parents, their their ideals on love and their their concepts of love and the way that their love to us was so conditional and so like on and off or it was like a competition for love. I feel like really mm. fucked. Uh, me just speaking for the both of us. Sorry, Jake, but I mean like we're married. I can speak for him, right? Um, <laughs> it just fucked up our ideals and concepts of love and the way that we give it and like, you know what I mean? Just so many things. What's like, your love language? I understand that. I don't, smart people, funny people, I guess. That's my love language at the end of the day. If someone makes me laugh, like that's, it's over. Is that what you mean? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And and how do you how do you choose to express love to Jake? I feel like understanding, like being there, like just in the moments that like no one else can, like being there and just I don't know. I mean, maybe it's like a weak spot, but like even I feel like we're both very understanding of the ways that we're both fucked up. Like, you know what I mean? Like we we're both trying to make each other better, like in the ways that we are. Like I've always been very bad at like I don't know, like timeliness, like being responsible, like understanding, like people waiting on you, understanding those kind of things. Like Jake makes me like a punctual, responsible person, but I feel like I make him like... Responsible in his own way? No, I feel like I make him more emotionally like communicative and like more like, you know, I don't know how to put that into words, but I feel like in in the ways that like I'm yin, he is yang in the ways that... So is this like a forever thing? Because the way you're talking about it right now seems like it's it's a good balance. Yeah, like, you know, I don't, I mean, it's hard because I think that we both were like, oh my God, let's get married, let's get married, let's get married. And then we got married and it's like, what is married life to us? You know what I mean? And it's different to every couple. Yeah, and like, neither of us are really realistically fit in the place to be married right now. We're just dizzy as f- and like decided to do it, you know? <laughs> and it's like, now it's like figuring out what married life is to us. And like, it's hard. Like, it's fucking really, really hard. And we both kind of came to the stop where we're like, what do we do now, you know? But I think in the regard of you asking if it's forever, like, I'll, like, always love him forever. I'll always have, like, a special place in my heart in this time of my life being shared with him forever. And, like, if I'm as happy as I am and was in that moment, then, fuck yeah, like, let's, let's ride it out, you know? Do you guys live but together? he's also crazy, so what? <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys live together? No. Okay. Um, We just see each other a lot. Jake lives in Calabasas in a house with, like, 35 f-ing people that all are like have like g7x's and f-ing like joby tripods and like i live with like seven stoners like you know what i mean like like our worlds are very different in that regard so it's it's more of just like a sleepover meshing of worlds i could see myself living in the team 10 house it's just like i got a house and like a lot of 
shit I have to deal with right now. And it's kind of like... Yeah, you have your own business and... Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, up and rooting my whole world into the Team 10 house might not be the solution, which again goes back to me saying, like, how traditional can we be, you know? And I don't know. I don't know. I think you're an untraditional person and you guys are Very. young, so whatever Very. this is, it is to you. Make it, it- Yeah, exactly, <laughs> which is weird. I know. It's, it's weird explaining it because I think that we're kind of like, yeah, we don't know what the f- we're doing either. You know, and that's called life. And that, yeah, exactly. Honestly, and like for the the roads that we were given, like, and us both being very like impulsive, unconventional people, like, it doesn't feel that weird to us, but it like is. I know to the rest of the world. If you love spending time together and you enjoy each other's relationship, maybe just don't get married. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like, I, whatever. I'm kidding. Whatever. I'm Did- kidding. Yeah, I, I mean, one hundred percent. I enjoy the time I spend with Jake, unlike anyone else. Today we got lunch, and I literally just like. The entire time was being like, damn, like, like the way I feel right now, like, like the way I'm laughing with you, like this whole fucking time, like at everything, just like at the fucking paparazzi, like making jokes <laughs> is like my, my soul feels full. Like I would give like for an hour of my day to be this, I'd make the rest of my day miserable. Like, so are you, you go, well, how much more famous do you feel like you've gotten since the wedding? Because honestly, before this wedding, I didn't know who you were. And now oh I can't God. go anywhere without hey. seeing your face or hearing your name. That's cool. Um, love that. Jesus. Damn. Yeah. I'm just being honest. No, I love it. I love a good, honest f-ing moment. I'm still irrelevant. Let's be f-ing real. This is the nah. Zach Sang show. Like have Ariana Grande on. Like I'll go. Um, but <laughs> she did sit right there. No, st- I'll stand. Seriously. We can like lice all the f-ing couch. Like I should not be here. Um, yeah, I mean, Jake and I combining our audiences, like, did a lot. Like, it, it was crazy. I mean, he has really, really young viewers. And, like, he's also Jake Paul. I feel like the whole world's been watching him for a really long time. And I don't know. I'm crazy. Combining our viewership was something that ended up, like, working. And, like, that's cool. It was, I don't know. I think we expected people to fuck with it, but, like, not as much as they did, which was a very, like, crazy feeling. And I think that... We both bring out a side of each other, too, that makes for our best content, which mm-hmm. is cool. I don't know. I don't I th- know. I don't know how to answer that. Because <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, because I now see you, like, front row at Fashion Week. Paparazzi follows you. Yeah, it's weird. That kind of stuff did happen, like, more and more. Like, with Bella, I was getting more introduced, I guess, into, like, the traditional world. But it was always, like, her world, you know? And I wanted to be, like, backseat to that. Because I'm like, shine, you fucking badass bitch, You know? Like, it was, like... You like that. What? Did you like that? Taking the backseat to somebody and allowing them to kind of... Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think more so when I love someone and I see them thrive, I'm like, go, go, get it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm not going to be like, look at me. Like, that's not, (laughs) I don't know. I'm not like that. And, but now for it to be more like surrounding me in my life is very interesting. It's hard to deal with, but I never want to be that person that's like, fame is so hard. Pray for me like that. Cause like at the end of the day, like I do this, I signed up for it. You know, I don't know. Has there been a moment where you thought maybe it's not worth it? Because watching your stalker story times, Really scared the living shit out of me. Yeah, I, I was mean, scared. But that for was you. like, I mean, second grade. Like he was in my second grade class. So he like, knew you. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like one, like fully. Like would call my home phone every day in second grade because you know how they had like the list of like oh my your God, home phone this numbers. Crazy. And like we like I I mean I grew up in Vegas, but like we're in like the same area, so like elementary schools. What was it about thing. you? That he was just Dude, obsessed with at abs- such a young age. I honestly, I was just obnoxious, I think. <laughs> so, like, maybe I was just, like, the loudest one, like, easiest target for him to, like. And then he would kind of, like, ghost, though, for, like, a year or so and, like, pop back up. And you just ways. wonder, oh, where is he? Resurface. And he's going to kill me one day. <laughs> <I'm> Stop. Like, ah. <laughs> Stop. Um, Don't bring that back. Um, I don't like that. Yeah. He's yeah. never fully gone. He has, like, social media that I low-key, like, stalk. All the time. I'm actually scared to say that. That's ironic that I stalk my stalker. Okay. We're gonna, I don't know. Oh my god. That's we're the editing of it that all. out. Okay. I kind of. Well, I kind of understand. You got to know where he is at all times. You got to keep your eye on him. Yeah, he be tweeting. He be tweeting some crazy. Shit. I don't even know what to say. About I need you? to do stalker updates. Everyone thinks because I don't do updates that he's not like he doesn't do it. But I just I felt like I was at a place where obviously I was talking about it because people were very interested and like I felt safer talking about it online. So it was like if I fucking die, it's like. My yeah, stalker pe- killed me. We know exactly who to go to. Yeah, but then it got to a point where I felt like I was drawing more attention to it and almost like inciting him, so I kind of like chilled. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really want to give you security recommendations and make sure somebody's chilling outside Please your house. do. You know, I I'm have, not the safest. I'm getting better, though. Tana, if you need somebody, I have amazing people to recommend. You're an icon. I mean, truly. I, that, How free- much charity work can Zach Sang do for Tana Mosho <laughs> To keep you day? safe, I would do a lot. Oh, I love you. No, I think you're, uh, you're, 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 you're one of the treasures of 
of our generation, and you've been a treasure of YouTube you're culture. And yeah, you're fascinating to me in the best possible ways. You're so great. You are so great. from Las Ve from Las Vegas, and 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 being in it, I can't even imagine. I mean, I can't imagine because I did it my own way, right? Like turning to a microphone as a friend, the same way you've turned to a camera as a friend. Oh, that's cool. Is something very special. It really and, is. And to create a community. I don't know. It's it, weird. It's like these weird little cults everywhere created by these crazy people. I don't know. It's cool. Is there somebody you care about on YouTube? Oh, my God. Yeah, there's lots of people I care about on YouTube. You mean like YouTubers? Yeah, I mean... I mean, I know I'm just sitting here like every interview I ever do that's in-depth is just sucking the fart out of Shane Dawson's ass because I think he's so one of a kind. Well, he, uh, you know... Like... He's amazing. I, he's just the goat. I owe everything to him. You know, I always will. I, I tried to real uh, realize... I tried to convince him the other day and with Rylan. I said... Dude, you've changed the way a whole generation watches and perceives a documentary. And oh, what, absolutely. What a documentary means to tens of millions of it's kids. It's fucking insane. And his ability to just, like, reinvent is unlike anything on the platform. Like, he's going to be 80 and doing something that is still just as yeah. interesting to all of us when we're 80. I swear. He's like... And just the way he takes everyone in and, like, his advice. And, like, I remember every piece of advice he's ever given me. He's, like, so... Just... It, wise smart i don't even know i'm like at a loss of words but i love a lot of creators i love david dobrik i think he's like a visionary and a genius i don't know what do you learn from jake in the content creation space dude that's one thing that was probably one of the first things that i really noticed myself like falling for jake is how enamored i was by the way he just dominates his business like in the regard of youtube like mm -hmm. i I felt like I was at a point in my career where I was doing YouTube and I was doing it well enough for me and like the people around me were all just doing it in such different ways, you know, other YouTubers and that it wasn't like, not that it wasn't inspiring to me, but do you know what I mean? It, I was just kind of watching everyone do YouTube, like whatever, and then I saw Jake Paul, like, and I was just like, wow, like, like his grind just doesn't stop the, as hard as he possibly works, the way that he turns everything into like content that's like unique and like the way he's capturing his audience and just how smart he is like algorithmically and like business wise. I don't even know. Like he's always just teaching me like new random little things like where I'm just like, why don't I know that? Like you smart. He pushes you. Yeah, exactly. Like he challenges me to be something that I don't think I would have like reached for a long time without him. Maybe ever. That Hey. And like at the end of the day, like, you know, it's not conventional and we might be up and Doesn't like whatever matter. you want to say. But at the end of the day, if someone challenges you to be your best self, like that is so sick. That That's a real relationship, right? Oh my God. <laughs> she has real life. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, like maybe I have crazy standards, but that's like my thing. I'm like, dude, I, I just want to be with somebody who pushes me to be yeah. the best version of me. And yeah. I do that for them. Yeah. And I just, and again, I'm bad with distraction and like jumping into things and like whatever. You can pick apart all the mentally unhealthy parts about this sentence but I'd just been in a relationship where someone was really like dragging me down and to go like like the drastic like nature of that you know what I mean like the dichotomy to go from like rock bottom of someone like pulling you away into like your worst self to someone pushing you like skyrocketing to like your best self like that rush is like the most insane feeling in the world and maybe that's you what know? kind of fueled this wedding Maybe this idea that, like, wow, somebody's supporting me, somebody's pushing me, somebody who yeah. I consider to be in a relationship is not, like, pulling me into their dark f***ing hole. Yeah, like, like who I who I am, like, when I'm with him, I, like, really love. Like, if that makes sense. Like, when we're thriving, like, I love that, Hannah. Do you, you know? I don't know. Do you consider this an open relationship? Like, are you in a relationship with Noah? Um, no, I'm not in a relationship with Noah, but I do f***ing love her. She's so dope. She's an and incredible human. And we have so much in common and, like... Which is cool. Um, well, but I, weirdly, I was thinking that when you were sitting here telling me some of your story, you, uh, I, I mean, I know Noah. Yeah. Enough, I mean, I, we're friends. She literally was like, "You're gonna crush that saying You're gonna love it." Like, blah, blah blah. She was giving me so much advice. I was like, "Oh my god, you season, bro." She, she's incredible. But she's I do, great. I see the similarities there. Yeah, we're we're really similar, and it's cool because it caught me like super off guard. So I was like, "Damn, I f with you," but I had, like classifying that. Like, I, I literally feel like I just met her. So that's like insane to even think about. Um, when did you meet her? Um, 
when did I formally meet? I mean, I guess I formally met her when she was still dating Zan and like she, we definitely like didn't get along over him, which is crazy and hilarious. And now we're both like, what a piece of shit. No offense, Zan. I'm, you might've grown from now. Um, but like, I don't know. Yeah, we met at the VMA. She was dating him. He was talking to me. She was not happy about it, obviously. Um, wow. And then, yeah, now we, we just like, we bonded over that and like shitty guys in LA and you know. Yeah, does this friendship kind of get fueled by the fact that like you just want to like stick it to him? Just give him the middle finger? Well, I think that's, like, a, a really unhealthy. Like, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, like, if we were only hanging out, just like, f*** you, like, to him, that would, like, not be it for us. You know what I mean? And I, I, I don't want to ever be, like, a spiteful person. And I feel sorry for Diego. Like, in a lot of the ways that he f***s over girls, I think that <laughs> me just, I'm always like, I'm like, he can't help it. He's just f***ed up in the head. But, like, you know, I don't know. So, no. I, I just f*** with her. Like, really, we just, like, resonate in a lot of ways. She's a special person. She's great. Isn't he having a baby? I thought was he was, but I don't think it's. Yeah, happening. I think it was fake. Oh. <laughs> Got oh my it. God. Any Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, it's a weird place out there. Wait, what is. I met a fan today that was literally like, oh my God, I was fing Lil Xan after you. Like, I went to his apartment. <laughs> and I was like, girl, dap me up. Oh my God, Eskimo <laughs> sisters, thanks yeah. for telling me. Yeah, literally. She's like, wasn't he such a piece of shit? I was like, yeah, let's take a photo. <laughs> you what? <laughs> It was crazy. <laughs> so what is Bella to you? Just friends? Bella? Yes. Yeah, just friends. But we just... Like, you were together. Yeah, our friendship is just like special. She's also someone that I feel like gets me in a lot of ways. A lot of people don't, you know? And like, she changed my life just in a way that like... People always get on me for like loving people so much. And like, I'm that bitch that sits down and I'm like, Shane Dawson changed my life. YouTube saved my life. Bella Thorne changed my life. Jake Paul changed my life. Like, shut the f*** up, Tana. Like, stop falling in love with everything that walks. It's not that. I swear to God. I just, I'm lucky to have met a lot of really special, unique people that really, like, have, like, diversely changed my walk of life and, like, my growth, I guess. But, I mean, yeah, Bella changed my life. I don't think I ever would have moved to L.A. I don't think I would have. I think, because I, I, I was living in Vegas when I met her. Um, wow, that I went long to, ago. And Maybe I like Hefner. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't take the, like, plunge. I, like, I just was back and forth. I didn't want L.A. to change me. I didn't want to be one of those YouTubers that L.A. changes and, like, blah, blah, blah. And I was just kind of, like, doing YouTube in Vegas but not reaching my full potential at all. And Bella really, like, you know, made me want to move out here and do things. And, like, how hardworking she was really put me on the path to, like, you know, she just inspired me in a lot of ways. I don't know. And I'll, I love her. I think she's, like, a very, like, forgiving, like, she wanted the best for me. She wanted anything I wanted. She made it happen, you know? Like, I just, I love her. I always will. That's special. Yeah, she's great. Well, she wasn't happy about the marriage at first, wasn't she? Wasn't she? I don't, I don't think she still is. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people weren't. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, but Bella, one thing I do love about her is she's so protective over me. She is literally like a fucking Rottweiler. Like, if, <laughs> and I could fucking make her so mad, and she still just is the most protective person over me. It's so cute. So I think that's just. She's definitely seen Jake be a little ho in L.A. probably. So she definitely was, like, having my back. But we're okay with that? Are you what? okay with that? Him getting around or hooking up with other people? Like, I, like you just got to define this. Are we open or closed? I, I really, I, I hate to put the day-by-day -day thing on this. <laughs> I really do because it's just annoying at this point. I can date mark this as of the second if you'd like. Yeah, no. Actually, can you mark the minute? No. Um, But... Yeah, we're both very open people, and, like, literally years ago, I remember Jake and I always having talks about how people don't understand the ways that we're both open, and, like, we're not in a place where monogamy is always easy and, like, whatever. I think as I, like, fall more and more for him, there's a part of me that's, like, damn, like, I want you all to myself, but a part of me also that's, like, like, if he wouldn't be capable of that, would I be, like, setting myself yeah. up for something, like, more pain? It's just... It's complicated. It's a fucking mess in the regard of open or closed, but I guess you could say open. Open. Yeah. <laughs> so this is something he alerted you to, but you're not necessarily 100% for, but I understand that because if you're going to make him if you're going to make him conform to something that he doesn't want to do, yeah. That can I actually mean, make the relationship worse. I've been in an open relationship. I mean, I feel like that's what I like I was when I was dating Bella. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? She was dating Maude. I was still like dating other people, but like at the same time I was like, yo, this is my girlfriend, which was like fucking weird. But I don't know. I it's I think that I'm just very different with certain people, you know? Like, after Bella, I dated my ex, Brad, and I we were, like, really monogamous. And I kind of realized maybe I don't want to do that. Like, 
It depends on the relationship for me and the person. And that's totally okay. Yeah, which is also weird. I'm still, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's 20- I'm figuring all of that out kind of as I go. And like online, I mean, everything sexuality and relationship wise, I literally like my whole life was like, I'm super straight. And then I had f-ing Matt Bella and like fell in love with her. I was like, oops, guys, here's my girlfriend. Like, you know, I, I'm just kind of living. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. that's okay. Yeah, period. It's totally cool. You just happen to, period. You just happen to do it publicly. Yeah. Yeah. Billie Eilish, another person upset with this wedding. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe the most upset. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'd venture to say. I love Billie Eilish with every fiber of my Me being. fucking too. I mean, I watched your video. It was phenomenal. Thank you. How long did it take you to learn that piano uh, rendition? Way too long. <laughs> and with YouTube tutorials. I'm so <laughs> uncoordinated and not rhythmic at all. It's tragic. But you did it for her? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just needed that content to be different. I needed that video to hit differently. You know, do you only Swiffer your refrigerator when major celebrities my, and worldwide pop stars unfollow you? Might be the only time I've ever cleaned <laughs> in my entire life. Um, and yes. So um, when Miley unfollows me, guys, stay tuned. You know, the video's going to be great. No, I'm just kidding. Don't put that out um, there into the universe. Yeah, please don't, Miley. <laughs> I can't <laughs> take it. <laughs> Were you actually sad? Yeah. 100%. I love Billy. But at the same time, like. I don't think like friendship and like should ever be defined in a social media follow at all. And like Billy's constantly rotating her following. The moment she followed me, I was like, you don't have to do that. It's fucking charity work. What are you doing? You're Billie Eilish. So it like, it didn't really come as like a huge surprise, but I still was just like, I'm sorry I let you down. Yeah, but she commented on the wedding photo. She said fucking yikes. Yeah, and she <laughs> said yikes. She DM'd you back. Yeah, she was not, she was like, I'm not going to the fucking wedding. <laughs> No, like she was just not about it. Understandably, like so in her well, regard, she well, is not a fan. Why do you think people do not like Jake Paul? I mean, why do you think people don't like Tana Mojo? I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, I mean, just like I don't know if I I've mean, found somebody who doesn't like you yet. You'll find a lot of them, I'm sure, in the comments of this interview everywhere. <laughs> um, I don't know. Jake's been really impulsive and definitely made some mistakes, but I'm not one to, to, you know like come for that because like so have i yeah who are you to judge you know exactly i mean and i just very much am like maybe it's a bad thing i judge people off of how they are to me and how i see them and i feel like i see a side of him that a lot of people like don't get to and i i don't think he's all that bad guys tell bill tell billy why 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 jake's great (laughs) (laughs) billy's like i don't care shut up (laughs) um no i i'm not one to like prove it to people you know what i mean like it if people support, they do. If they don't, they don't. Like, I, like I've been saying to you this whole interview, I'm just living. Where were you when you wrote the record FaceTime? Like, where in, where in life? Hawaii um, with Maud and Bella. I love Maud's son so much because he is, like, when it comes to writing and, like, encapsulating the way that I feel, he is so good at that. And he's obviously so rhythmic and, like, helps me find the melody and, like, makes the beat and, like, all that kind of stuff. And I was at a point where I was just talking to this guy who, like, wanted to be kind of serious, and he lived in Hawaii, actually. (laughs) That was dizzy. I probably shouldn't have said that. Oops. By the way, Um, a relationship for you in Hawaii makes total sense. Yeah, totally. So beachy. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And I was just like, damn, I don't want to, I don't want to be serious, you know, with anyone, especially you. I'm not, I don't want to fall asleep on FaceTime, and that's where it all stemmed from, and we just kind of wrote that song. I don't want to fall asleep on FaceTime. Yeah. You are not the person that is worthy to have my face asleep against no, my I, phone while yeah. your phone's up against your own. Yeah, more so I just can't do it. Like, I'm going to hang up that FaceTime and, like, go be wild, you know? I don't know. Oh. Yeah. You don't yeah. want yeah. to be held back. That's what it's Yeah, about. exactly, exactly. Like, one of the lyrics, I'm trying to think, like, I'm too young to be getting in this deep. Like, mm. I'm so wet, but you're drowning me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, all plays on, you know what I mean? Just being, like, too free to, to be... Tied down by this person who's not worthy of this treacherous long distance in a in a fucking FaceTime oceany beachy way. I don't know. Your vocals on that record are pretty freaking great. Well, you're nice. Stop your sex saying. Don't say that to me. Can do you like, feel stop. like you are a singer? It's weird because it's like I sing, you know? So like, yes. But I feel more like a writer and a storyteller, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not sitting here like, vocalist of the year, give me a f***ing Grammy. Like, that's not <laughs> my M.O., but it's fun to sing and it's fun to to tell your story, you know, in 
music. It's fun to tell your story in books. It's fun to tell your story in YouTube videos. It's just kind of another outlet for me of like storytelling. How many story time videos have not made it to YouTube? It's so sad. Hundreds, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I'm actually editing one right now where I just am like, you dizzy bitch. Like, do you want to upload this? Like, I don't know. What, <sighs> what is your criteria? Like, like, why didn't some of these videos make it? I used to be a lot more reckless. Like, I would tell a really reckless story that, like, would be so scandalous and, like, get people in trouble and, like, no filter at all. And now I'm trying to just, like, be better for me, for, you know, everything. You're, and there's a lot of stories up. I have that could get a lot of people in trouble. So now I'm more so, like, or I don't want to be too bad of an example. I'm, I just try to think about it a little more. That's really the bottom line. Which goes back to the beginning of this conversation, which is a part of maturity. And yeah, exactly, an exactly. And, like, trying to curb my impulsivity and, like, by the way, you realize this only post wedding that you need to slow down. Yeah, even more. Yeah, because I I really was at a point where I was like, "You're so impulsive. You need to fix that in so many ways." But I think what happened is I I realized probably like a year and a half ago, like, "Damn, like I'm very impulsive. I need to curb that," and started really curbing that in like business and friendships and life decisions. But with love and like my heart, I'm still very like. Like, if I just love you, I fucking love you, which is bad. That's, I think that curbing my impulsivity on love is, like, a big thing that I'm now learning. That it's not just being impulsive in, like, business and life. And, like, it's also, like, relationships and love. I want to see some of these story times. Because, one, Do you? <laughs> genius concept. Two, yes. Just because I'm interested in these stories. You have a ton. Yeah. You can- I, that's why I'm excited for books, though, too. Is like... To put out a book of all the f***ed up shit I can't even, like, So are you writing it face. yourself? Yeah, I'm writing, like, three books right now, actually, which is kind of crazy. I love Ooh. to write. It really, like, it all goes back to writing to me. Holy like, storytelling. shit. Have you done yeah. a podcast? No, but I would. I 100% would. My problem with the podcast is, like... Your voice is, like, is great. It's, oh, you're so nice. By the way, yeah. You, you, is I, it? I'm so f***ing nasally and gross right now. It's really nice of you. Um, no, your been voice hear- is great, Zach saying. I've been uh, hearing it in my headphones. I, I can I can tell what, uh, tell you with 100% certainty that you have a great voice. You're so nice. It's insane. So much charity. So much make-a-wish is being done. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would do a podcast, but like the thought of being everywhere like, or being somewhere like every Monday. Like, I don't know if I'm like responsible enough to have a weekly podcast right now. But you want to be a storyteller. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely will have a podcast at some point. W- w- what is your writing process like? Are you working with a ghostwriter? Are you writing it yourself? No, I... Uh, personally, me, I'm not shading anyone. I'm like, none of you mad con kids with books. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm just... A ghostwriter's not it for me. I could never let someone write my story for me in the slightest. It's just... and I, But I also love to write. You know, some people don't. That's why they get yeah. a ghostwriter. It makes sense. But, like, no, I, I mean... One of the books, I think my first book, oh my God, T, is like gonna just be like my notes app in a book. Like every time I feel anything in any moment for the last like almost like year and a half, two years now about like love, fame, relationships, friendships, life, I literally yeah. just write down how I feel about it like poetically like in my notes. I love And then that. once I get to like 400 notes that I set locked in on like about everyone, people I've dated, things I've done, whatever. That's going to be my first book, I think. Oh, my gosh. That's I'm a great so idea. Thank you. Can you, like, you. give us a peek into your notes app right now? What's the most recent thing you put in there? Uh, the most recent thing I put in there? Yeah. I don't know what the most recent recent is. Um, I mean, I'm so scared. Oh, my God. I never share this. I, this is, like, probably my first time talking about it. I'm going to do another book, too, probably just about my childhood, like, life story, like, very cliche. Well, and then probably a funny book because I love Chelsea Handler and, like, her. There's very scattered mm-hmm. stuff about your childhood. Yeah. On the internet. Like, it's not all in one place. Yeah. I've realized that. Where are you going with this? I was notes? looking at my notes to see what it was. What was it? Um, oh, my God. This one, it's it's kind of juicy. I don't even know how I would say it. Basically, I realized I had a love for someone that I didn't know that I had, so I, I started writing about it, but... Whoa. You'll have to stay tuned. Is it a friendship love? Is it a love love? What is it? Buy my book now. Oh my God, I'm ready. <laughs> that was great tease. But, uh, I'm so excited. Do you have a date? Um, no. I wish I did 100%. But soon, I, I ideally would like to do it like Christmas time. It's going to be my favorite thing ever wow. that I ever put out. I think it's a great like, idea. I, oh my God. Like, I just remember even seeing Shane like put out his first book. Was it It Gets Worse, I think? Yeah. Was well, his first book? I think he came on the show for that book. 
Oh, yeah, I that think was a long so. time like, ago. Like, five years ago. Yeah, like, I remember, like, it's like how excited I was for him. Just being like, holy f***, like, you're meant to do this. I can't wait to read this. I know it's like... Like, you just saw that book and you knew it wasn't ghostwritten. Like, you knew Shane yeah. Dawson f***ing wrote that, like, top to bottom. And that's what I want my fans to feel. I'm just so excited for that feeling. He edits every night, all night. Dude, I know, with Andrew. And like, they that duo is, like... It's crazy. It's, like, Shane found someone with that drive like him, that comedic timing, like, that right-hand man. It's There's, very lucky. I hope to find an editor that gets me, like, that one day. Do you have one now or no? No. You do it yourself? Yeah. We were talking about your editing style, <laughs> like everything from putting the words in the right over you oh, yeah. to how precise you cut your sentences. It's so treacherous. I hate editing with everything in me. <laughs> like if someone could enter my brain and edit my videos, I would be the happiest person alive. Like anything bad that happened to me, I'd be like, I don't give a f I'm not editing. Like literally, I'd be so happy. It's so <laughs> fucking miserable. It would all make it up to the internet. Yeah, absolutely. And like, oh my God, I'd upload daily. Like it's like... The only thing holding me back right now, I feel like work-wise, is editing. I'm trying to find an editor that like matches my. But that's the biggest thing here is like David goes through the same problem. David Dude, Dobrik absolutely. can't have an editor. I know it, it's so true because it's like no one's going to see your content the way you do. Like I can film an hour story time and give it to ten editors and edit it myself, and we'd all edit it eleven completely different ways. Like you know, and have, it's like, have you tried an editor? Yeah, I've tried a lot of them. Like so many, like so many, and it just. I mean, there's some that are good, you know, like a lot of editors are really great at their job, but it, to me, no matter what, it always comes back like, damn, that could have been better if I did it myself. Not because they're bad, but just because they're not like in my head, like the way I'm going to roast myself with text on the screen is not the way someone else is going to roast me. Like, you know what I mean? It's 100%. like- hundred percent. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And sometimes yeah. it's hard to give somebody notes too, because then like you're kind of just doing it yourself. Exa and it's like, go back and put this back in that you cut out. It's like, it's too much. It's too hard. I don't know. That's something Jake and I talk about a lot because it's like he just films and freely sends all this footage to editors and they crush it and whatever. And he's like, damn, but like your content is edited so much better than mine comedically. Like, I wish yeah. I could do that. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm fucking miserable, babe. Like, you know, like. It's a trade off. Yeah, exactly. I, I need to get to a point where I, I train someone to edit with my brain like Shane did with Andrew, which is. You just got to. He's the goat. Um, he yeah. really has laid the groundwork. Period period he is he's youtube's dad he's thank, everyone's daddy thank 100%. you shane dawson for existing yeah and sorry for being your up kid <laughs> yeah, i mean you peed on him i watched that video. yeah what yeah the what? yeah dude he he like <laughs> you did technically yeah i didn't like not I pee mean, on him the title is i peed on shane dawson not clickbait yeah you wish this was clickbait. yeah that's it <laughs> So, <laughs> damn, Shane and I, that, but that's what I loved about him, like, always, because he, he always pushed the boundaries of what was, like, gross and f***ed up, you know what I mean? Like, getting to, like, do that with him, like, make some crazy f***ing clickbaity f***ed up weird kid video content was, like, you know? But also his documentary on it was really fascinating. Dude, straight up, I don't know what I would have ever done in that, in that situation at all, like, without him. What does the name Michael Weist mean to you? Oh, my God, like, my heart just sank. Like, I can't even, I don't know. I can't even, like, hear his name, I think, without feeling like, like, I literally, like, I want to throw up. Like, it just makes me, like, instantly want to throw up. And I don't think it ever won't. But, I mean, like, what do you do with that? Like, it's it's, it's all a learning experience. Like, I f***ed up. And I'll, I'll literally, like, regret-wise, I try not to have a lot of regrets, but I'll be sorry about that and the way that went for the rest of my life. I mean, like, my fans mean everything to me, so, like, up at their expense in any way is something that's like so painful for me I guess but I mean it taught me a lot about trusting people trusting people with business impulsivity like spite like so many things about myself and other people and like the the way the industry is like fucked up I don't know there's a lot that that's it's complex as fuck. from that like can you sh what is the the the, the core cautionary tale that you can share with other influencers. Because, by the way, I just saw this this kid, Michael Weiss, in the Jawline documentary on Hulu. Dude, I, I just watched that the other night and was, like, sending voice memos to Shane, like, I, freaking out, man. I mean, he's out there. He's working. Yeah, that's old. That was filmed a long time ago, Um, uh -huh. that documentary. And those kids in it, most of them now have, like, restraining orders against him, too, for, like, Oh my God. Which, watching it for me was so jarring in that regard because it was like, I know these kids and the stories they told me about Michael Weiss and 
they told me so many stories about him, obviously, that I'm not going to share, but, like, with details that, like, lined up so much with Jawline. Like, you know, he'd take us to Rodeo. He'd, like, get us massages. Like, he'd do all this up shit. And that visual imagery, like, jarred me. I laid in bed afterwards for an hour just, like, shaking. Like, after watching that, just the other day. Like, it's it'll always, like, me up. <laughs> Dark I, but hey. But I get it. Um, I, I, but that's... <sighs> yeah, but I mean, like, I'm, I'm also not, like, blaming... Michael Wise, like I fucked up at the end of the day. It's my mistake. My name was on it. My thing, you know. It I takes just... two to tango, but yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, it stemmed from me. I guess I'll always like blame myself. But I guess the tale is like the, the thing to tell other influencers, like you said, is not everyone's on your team. Like, not everyone is here to help you. Like at the end of the day, and like, it sucks. But you have to be really cautious. You have to like read people you have to and I'm, i still f up with that you know because i just want to trust people i want to give everyone a new chance i'm also bad about like the sense of if a bunch of people are telling me that someone is like fucked up like i want to figure it out for myself i want to trust them like i you, you know because people them? do that to me what do you want to fix them <laughs> they said do you want to facetime i was like is this a weird <laughs> facetime joke <laughs> no. i always want to fix people i'm always really like that i like a good challenge and i think that i have so much more empathy for people who are like f***ed up in the head than you know what i mean yeah the latter I, you know and i do yeah I, i'm a fixer and i need to fix that about myself <laughs> i feel like it's because uh, in your life a lot of stuff you couldn't fix but now mm -hmm. but but in time you found a fix yeah exactly unconventional fixes but yes absolutely um yeah that's interesting yeah yeah <laughs> I, you go question what Shoot. was your relationship with mac miller um, I actually met him, like, after TanaCon, like, around that time. And I feel like <sighs> that, for me, mentally, was the lowest point of, like, my career. I want to say maybe second lowest point of my life. Obviously, I think in the beginning, you know, like, at 15, wanting to, like, kill myself, that was, like, more intense because I felt like I had no purpose. But, like, the... The rock bottom after TanaCon was just unlike anything I've ever, like, felt in my life. And I just, I wanted to die. Like, I, that was the first time in my life where I was reading thousands of people telling me to kill myself online. And I felt like, damn, like, would the world be, like, a better place if I did? And I, I don't, you know, I, which is dark. Mm -hmm. And then I met him and he, his, like, zest for life, like, his, like, positivity, the way that, like, he could turn any situation into like a happy one. He really was like a big advocate of turning your pain into art in the same way that like I was. And he just like, the advice he gave me at that time of my life, I think was very pivotal to me growing up, especially from everything that was happening. You know what I mean? It was like, I needed that. And I just like, felt like he was this like angel i don't know it was like dropped into my life and i don't know what did he share with you he brought back that happiness for life again he brought back that like like you're gonna pick yourself up and you're gonna keep going and no matter how fucking painful this is like you're gonna make art out of it you're gonna make something beautiful out of it like that's what you're going to do like go continue to kill it like this is this is what you have like all you can do is make the most of it even though you fucked up like he just I don't know. It was, it was just like a dark tunnel, and he, like, brought the light back to it. Goosebumps. You shared a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and I grew up, like, obsessed with him. Like, not obsessed in the regard of, like, but, like, obsessed in, like, his music, his work. Like, one of my first concerts was a f***ing Mac Miller concert, and, like, I loved his music growing up. Like, I remember being, like, in seventh grade, like, obsessing over, like, and like all be there and like the way he wrote about his mom at such a young age being like wow he's like so wise beyond his years like his words spoke to me far before he ever did so him coming into my life and you know what i mean like it was just a very like full circle thing like it was like damn like and then a few weeks ago you you, you feel like you stumbled upon a white grand piano dude dude that was weird as f i i feel like i get signs from him all the time i like literally like not one and I don't like I don't I don't know I don't want to like make it about me because it's not at all but I'm just saying like there's not a second that like goes by that I don't think about him like pretty much every second of every day I'm like thinking about him and missing him and it's just hard it's it always will be but it's like there 
certain days where I feel like there are things that like, you know, like, like keep you going through it or like signs. I don't even know. It was weird. I knew the seventh was going to be like a really hard day for me just because it had like been a year and I kind of was like spending the two weeks up until that point. Like, I don't know, just anxiety, freaking out over like whatever. And it's almost like when it happened, like I just felt like, you know, like, I don't know, like a presence, like a, like a, you can't be sad about this. Like just, it was almost like a reassuring reminder. Like I wouldn't want you to be sad today. And then, yeah, my, like my favorite thing about like going to his house or being around him was like his big white grand piano and like, just like him playing it. Like I can just hear it. I'll always hear it. And like, whatever, like, I don't know that sound sitting there watching him do it. He loved it so much. It was like his outlet in a way. And then I was in New York and my friend was like, yo, come to this thing, whatever. It was something I didn't even want to leave. I was going to stay in all day. And everyone was just like, no, just go out, like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, like, again, distraction. That's who I am, whatever. Me thinking I could be distracted from it or run from it at all. And, like, I show up to the <laughs> rooftop and it's just this kid, like, beautifully playing this white grand piano, like, overlooking New York. And it's – I remember going to the VMAs last year, like, so excited because he was being like, you're going to crush it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be so f- fun. So, like – a year later, being back in New York for the VMAs, like, wishing he could be there, like, being led to that moment was, like, damn, like, I hope you can see, like, what you've done for me. I don't know. I'll shut up. I, no, I think, uh, I think he definitely can see it. I mean, I hope so. I don't know. I just want to make him proud. And I don't know. After that meeting with him, do you start creating again? Do you turn this sadness and this... Um, I mean, a while. It was a lot of, like... I don't know, like, his advice, other people's advice, talking to the people around me, including him, you know what I mean? That, like, it took me a while. It was, like, because I didn't know what to come back with. I just felt, like, so, like, sorry, you know what I mean? And, like, all I wanted to do was, like, make the people that love me proud and, like, actually grow. So it was, like, definitely a lot of, like, sitting back and being, like, get back to why you, like, fell in love with this and, like, making YouTube videos and, like, whatever, you know? Do you feel like you've made them proud now? Do you feel like you've made up for it? That's a hard question with me. I, it just resonates hard because it's like I'll never not feel sorry for it. So I never want to be like, now I made them proud and I'm fine. And I did because I'll always feel like wrong about TanaCon, you know. I hope that I've done things since that make my fans see that I've grown. You know what I mean? And, and she- see that I grew up from it and like make them laugh and make them proud and that they can see the way that I've grown from Tana at 15 to Tana at f***ing 17 to Tana doing TanaCon and f***ing up and hitting rock bottom to, like, hitting rock bottom again. and You like, shared your whole life. Exactly. Like, I hope that they see that I've that I've grown a lot, but I'm also still growing. I don't f***ing know. How many times have you been arrested? I'm like, define arrested. Um, <laughs> By the way, I love, I, I I love the that. dichotomy of that. Like, love that. That is my whole YouTube channel. Like, this is f***ed up, but also, ha um, <laughs> um, The, the final rest is, I don't know, handcuffs around your wrist? Oh, then definitely, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> growing up, I've just, maybe, like, in handcuffs, probably, like, three, four. I definitely got in trouble stealing as a kid from, like, malls with my friends. Pulled over on a drive to Vegas. There's a story time about that with a lot of drugs in the car. Was not it. Bad moment. Bad story. Um, Coachella, underage drinking. That one was, like, actually scary. Like, police, like, hard handcuffs, like, fingerprints, like, eyes. like Really? Mugshot. Really? Mm. For underage drinking at Coachella? Yeah, like, minor in consumption, minor in possession. Like, they just wanted my f***ing judicial court money into, like... <laughs> Bringing me back to Palm Springs six months later to f***ing testify. That was crazy. Yeah, now I like to think I'm, like, smarter and better. Like, hopefully I'll never get arrested again. But also, like, jump got to my mugshot in six months. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm a little nervous that you just manifested that happening. Dude, I know. I'd be making dark jokes about shit and then Dude, it just happens. It's I- bad, but... This is a manifestation zone. There has been YouTubers on this couch talking about the precautions they do and take to not get arrested, and then literally a couple months later really? they get arrested. Sam Who? and Colby. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, you know what's funny is when Sam and Colby got arrested, I think Colby hit me up. I was just like, what do you do when you get arrested? Like, what do you do on YouTube? <laughs> like, I remember they, like, came to me for, like, getting arrested <laughs> advice, and I was like, bro, what do, like, what do I do? What I don't know. <laughs> don't get arrested? Like, 
I'm YouTube's like poster bad child. Like, oh man. That is so funny. That's terrible, right? We only there's only one person to call once you get arrested on YouTube. And when you're calling to Mojo for advice, like that's when you know you hit rock bottom. Is Mojo <laughs> your real last name? It's like Paul now, but no, um, no, yes, what, no, it is. No, no, I don't. Like, is that how you pronounce it? Yo, yes, yes. I know it's. It literally is like someone just banged their face on a keyboard. I really <laughs> should have had like. My middle name's Marie. Like I could have just got my like Tana Marie and like been so cute. Not like, too basic. Yeah, I guess so. But like in hindsight, like it's not it. That was actually something I was more excited about getting married is having this like four letter fucking easy ass last name. Like come for me, bitch. I'm Tana Paul now. But no one seems to like the name Tana Paul. So I guess I'm Tana Mojo still. I like Mojo. It's you. It's your me brand. T. Big uh, T. Are we going to release more music? Definitely. I actually have a song, I think, coming out really soon that I wrote about Jake. Whoa. And I'm excited. Yeah. Is it like a real record or is this one of those diss tracks? No, it's a real record. It's funny because I, I wanted to make It's Every Day Ho really bad because like he did It's Every Day, bro. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to do this like ho anthem where I just like shaded everyone like rapper Tana's back in full effect. No f***s given like Team 10 house with a hundred f***ing bitches everywhere like. <laughs> It's every day, ho. Like, it would have been so funny, but it sucks because, like, if I put out something like that, then if I put out, like, a serious love song that I wrote about Jake, like, f***ing crying, like, six weeks later, people are going to be like, but I guess Confusion's my brand. I really could do both. Who knows? I don't know. Is, I don't know. Stay tuned. <laughs> is there a difference between Tana on camera and Tana off camera? I... The only difference I would say is people are very surprised at how chill I can be in the regard that I'm always very wild on camera. So when people just see me like smoking a blunt, like shutting the fuck up, they're like, who is she? <laughs> but like other than that, not really. No, I think you kind of like completely get what you see online. I couldn't like doing both would be really exhausting. I see a lot of YouTubers that really like that's something a lot of YouTubers like come to me about like the beauty gurus. They're like, how do I just like. How do I just like smoke a blunt online and not give a f like you like teach me like you know what I mean like uh, and I just I always think to myself like damn go you that you can like maintain this whole brand and like be raunchy off camera but like I would just get caught slipping like I just I can't keep things a secret like you, my mouth is too big. You either need to be yourself or not at all. Yeah like imagine if I had this clean ass brand and then I got arrested for underage drinking at Coachella and everyone was like we hate you you're canceled like you know like <laughs> I couldn't keep it a secret I'm like mugshot merch like you know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, are you online culture or is online culture you? <laughs> like, I do you got, does that make sense? Like, Yo, is like that what, my new Twitter bio? <laughs> like, what comes first? I, the Tana or the meme? Like, I don't f***ing know. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's hard. I'm like a walking living meme, but I don't know if it's a good thing. <laughs> like, I, oof. Your kangaroo hat yeah. is solid right oh now. Oh, my God. I know. I don't know why I'm wearing this hat. My stylist is just like, pet it on. It's cute. Here we are. Yeah. Man, how good was that billboard, though? Yo, I that billboard... Wh which one are you talking about? I'm talking about... Like, bent the one, over on Yeah, the one billboard? on Sunset. Okay, I was supposed to have that billboard for two weeks. It never went down. It's It literally, like, it just went away. And, like, I was literally driving past that at one point. Like, how long am I going to be, like, in doggy style above a McDonald's <laughs> across the street from, like, hide on Sunset before someone buys out this billboard? It was kind of crazy, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, but that was fun. Billboards are fun. Yeah. <laughs> Jake and I really wanted to get one. Like, just married. I'm, like, bent over. It would have It would have been so it. That, <laughs> that's funny. I'm, I'm terrible. I mean, when you see this giant billboard, and then I'm watching your video, and I, I, I heard your dad in 2017 refer to you as a no-talent girl. Oh, yeah. Do I'm, you, like, still does, I'm sure. Well, do you feel like you're still that chick? I think that digital media is defining a new wave of traditional talent, if that makes sense. I don't know totally. how to put that in, like, another. Totally. But, like, in the regard of, I feel like, 10 years ago, five years ago even, you know what I mean? Like, talent was, like, you're a singer, you're an actress, you play sports, you, like, box, 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 box. And now it's, like, these people are just, like, making their own lane. They're paving their own way. Like, it's, they're blurring the lines of what traditional talent is. People are talented in so many ways and I think that that's what's cool about the internet is it shows how diverse people are in all the ways totally you know anything's a talent like you're an incredibly talented interviewer you could I guess you could say the things I do are talented but I'm not one to be yes. like I mean my Instagram bio is not bad for a five with no talent you know like I, 
I'm not sitting here claiming I'm like massively fucking talented, but I don't know. It's different. But yeah. You, what you're saying is a hundred percent accurate. It's giving everybody the opportunity to redefine what it means to be talented. And I think yeah. talent is being a friend to everybody through a camera lens. Talent yeah. is showcasing their entire lives and every aspect of it, no matter what it is, good or bad. Yeah. That's I think the resilience of like online in general, you know what I mean? Like, you know, all of us that even you, me, everyone who does this online, like we're all resilient to an extent mm -hmm. because it's like so many people would get that one comment saying like, can never turn the camera on again. You dumb and like wouldn't you know and that's the test isn't like it? that's yeah like it's it's testing you in a lot of ways which i think is like a talent i don't know i'll shut up and the other thing too is you know youtube and the internet has given the opportunity for some of these influencers to redefine traditional media in an online sense right Dude, yeah. shane in these documentaries i'm telling you yeah kids are not gonna be able to watch documentaries unless they're done the way shane dawson does I the documentary i agree and it's like don't you feel like millennials' attention spans are getting, like, just shorter yes. and shorter and shorter? Like, the Vine era, David mm -hmm. Dobrik's vlogs, those cuts, like, whatever. Like, twenty For Shane to find a way to mesh the millennial almost, like, attention span and the way we focus on things and what we pay attention to with a long, t like, documentary piece of content together is exactly what I mean by him pivoting, like, reinventing, redefining. Yeah. Like... And and he you shares know. himself in these documentaries. It's like exactly. It's, it's as much him as it is the subject. I, I'm enamored by it. So am I. Because like you were literally. I'm just like yes. I'm like stan Twitter right now. Like I would literally be like at Shane's foot if it wasn't like <laughs> Tana Mojo. Like f I worship him. I, he's yeah, really amazing. It, yeah. Interesting thoughts there because very few people sum it up that way. You know, yeah. really, he's, truly. Dude, he's great. What else are you thinking, Daniel? Are you wearing your wedding ring? No, actually, I probably should be. I just suck. Like, I have a broken nail, like, no jewelry. I'm bad. The wedding ring scared me. Like, at first, we just had, like, this dizzy little f***ing random engagement one because, like, Jake proposed with a ring pop, first of all. Like, it was never... I don't even know if a ring was in our plans originally, and then I got one. I don't even know how I got that one. My stylist or this team, some something. And then the wedding day, he gave me this, like, $300,000, like, beautiful f***ing ring. And I was like... It's cool, I'll wear it, but like also I really want to give it back to you and your fancy team of 19 people that you have hired to watch it. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't fucking know. Like, a part of me is like, okay, yes, I'm going to wear it. Like, yes. I'm just taking it day by day with that. My biggest thing with all of the nice things that Jake gets me is like, what happens when I lose it and have to pay for it? Because I don't want to do that. Yeah, so and I'm not materialistic. I don't really define my love and like, like it's so dope that that he does and i love the daddy's rich jokes i'm like daddy's rich merch is out now um i th they're fun <laughs> they you know them. but at the same time like that's not like jake could bring me an iced coffee and i'd freak out the same way over a three hundred thousand dollar ring yeah because so you're like, rich what you're rich <laughs> you don't need somebody else's money i guess that's true i'm like define rich i just gave my third leg to the government the irs is insane taxes are insane yeah. um but <laughs> yeah it is I uncle guess. sam will always find you you, but you're right. I don't I don't ever want to be, like, reliant on someone else's money. I saw that a lot with, like, my mom growing up. My dad kind of, like, trapping my mom in that way. So, like, as much as I make jokes about Jake, like, taking care of me, I never want to be that girl who's, like, gold digging and actually reliant on, like, a man's money. I like that boss bitch get to your bag mm -hmm. energy. I want to, you know, deep down I might make jokes, but I want to motivate the young people that watch me to go get what they want and not rely on anyone else. And, you Hell know, yeah. up their bag. You've been self-sufficient for a very long time. Oh, thank you. That's a very nice thing to say. Yeah, it's weird. It was kind of like sink or swim for me, and I knew I didn't want to be traditional. So finding a way to be self-sufficient in a way that isn't like traditional people was, you know, a challenge. We've covered a lot here, Dan yeah. Mojo. Yeah. I know Dan has more thoughts. No, I just like, do you think it's crazy that, like, this interview is probably going to get a lot more views than some of, like, the musicians we have in here? Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I hate that. Why? Like, there's so, just so many, like, talented, I don't know, but I'm a very self-deprecating person. It's hard for me to, like, give myself credit. Like, I love my fans. I have such engaged, insane, awesome fans that, like, care so much about the tiny little details of my life and, like, all this bull that I've had to say for the last hour, so it's nuts. <laughs> but, like, at the same time, there's so many talented people that are so slept on that I'm like, F like, give them those views, not me. It's just weird. It's The internet's, it's weird, mm -hmm. for sure. That's, a, that's an interesting thought, for sure. <laughs> when will Jake Paul unblock me from Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> ah! No way! I 
have his Twitter, I'll unblock you, first of all. Um, but second of all, why the f*** did he block you? That is um, so not it. Jake, honey, baby, what are you f***ing doing? I don't think he likes me. Yeah, but I know That's, Logan, long time. Long- no one can dislike I, I you. You're Logan. Zach saying. I've known Logan a long time. I don't believe that. Why do you think this? Um, I'm switching the interview. Well, so I did call him an online bully at one point in time, but it was but maybe that, he was being an online bully. He no. definitely was being an online bully. He was tweeting something like maybe a year and a half ago about like don't be an online bully, and I'm like, hey man, you're kind of an online bully, and then he blocked me. Wow, I'm not a blocker. I don't think I've blocked like anyone ever. So. When people block people, I'm like, that's just not it. Like, debate about it. Like, go back and forth. I like, mean, at least Jacob Satori has started, like, sending me d- direct messages, like, insulting me backhanded. Oh, my God. Have you ever had him on the show? He hates me. No, he won't Why come do here. people hate you? <laughs> there, no, by You're the way, so it. I just want to be clear with you. There's two people who hate me. Jake Jacob Paul Sartorius. and Jacob Satori. I'm okay. okay. <laughs> that's kind of f***ing hilarious. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie at all. Yeah, I don't know. I can't say I claim every little thing Jake does, but I'm no. sure he doesn't claim every little thing I do. So, but, you know, here we are. You know, I've known Logan a long time. He used to come on the show. He doesn't anymore, but he used to. Like, Hello, Logan. Come promote your f***ing boxing sh- or whatever. Yeah, it's been six and a half. How long has it been? Six and a half, seven years since he's been on the show? Yeah, it's been about six years. That would be a legendary years. interview. You just ask such good questions. You are literally one of the greatest interviewers of our f***ing generation. Like, that, Thanks. The, the way, like, you keep a conversation going with, like, a toaster. Like, you know, you could do it with anything. It's it's so impressive. Yeah, but that it makes, would be amazing. It makes it much easier when people like you are, are down to share. And uh, I thank you. It means Stop. a lot. You're, oh, my God. You're just it. Snaps for Zach saying. Uh, thank you. Um, what were you about to say? Well, I say you've said the word impulsive a thousand times. I feel like you're here to promote Logan's podcast. Dude, I know. <laughs> Every time I say impulsive now, which is a lot because I'm impulsive, I'm like, <laughs> impulsive. Like, <laughs> it's so annoying i appreciate him and mike are wild on that show they were literally just saying like if tana wasn't famous would she be a prostitute what do you think about that bro and i was like oh my god i hate you guys i mean that that's like <laughs> come on really <laughs> yeah they're that's so dizzy that's where we're gonna go with this yeah they're yeah. so they're just such dizzy like bros but like i love logan at the end of the day i think it's like he's funny at what he does online and i'm not one to ever get offended over a joke i guess you know <laughs> you have tough skin <sighs> yeah true by the way, I don't know if they have the biggest podcast in the world, but they say it's the biggest podcast yeah, in the world. Every time they say it, I'm like, what them. have like views with like David Dobrik and Jess and Nash? Like, I think that's doing. No, yeah, I'm just I, I, no, I just want. My shading, Logan Paul. I'm not meaning to, Logan. I love you. <laughs> I just want hard stats, okay? Right, period. Me. I'm like, what is the number one podcast in the world? I don't know. If it makes you feel any better, well, David Dobrik, I don't know if he likes me. I don't think he likes me. You are so funny with, like, thinking f***ing everyone hates you. Like, I don't understand how anyone can hate you, first of all. Oh, Why? Do you think because, like, you had Trisha on and, like, she was talking about it? Do you think it's, like, a recent thing? Or no, I think he hated me before then. I've always... He won't come on the show. Um, I don't think David hates anyone, though. People always come to me about that. They're like, does David hate me? I'm like, no, he, does David hate me? He's just really caught up in his work, and I he's an artist. Yeah. I've watched him shoot these f***ing vlogs, and when he it's goes insane. into editing, yeah, it's, it's yeah. this... He's, like, giant puppet master. Yeah. And what he's orchestrating is really remarkable and stellar entertainment and yeah. quality art. His ability Big to, like... fan. Don't get me wrong. I think everyone in the vlogs is stellar, like, in their own way. They're all f***ing superstars, but, like, he could, if he had to, make... Anyone a superstar. That's it. He could make a fucking blender a superstar. He brings it out. On him. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a vlog squad member you enjoy? Is there a vlog squad member you think should be canceled? Do you have your own vlog squad? What the? Fuck? You have oh my friends? god! I just want to be a part of the vlog squad. That's it's the it's the end goal. You know, Shut I want up. David to buy me a car, and I just want to be a regular fucking vlog squad member like Jeff, like a, you know, a fucking <laughs> Carly and Aaron. Like it's so it. No, um, I love every vlog squad member. They're all. That's one thing that's cool is because they're they're all actually friends and like from David's hometown and like so they're all very genuine. But like, people do run the risk of being caught in a Twitter uh, Twitter update and. Yeah, I guess that's true. I just guess being, I mean like their bond is all very genuine and like what you see in the vlogs is so real. And I think the thing that I respect the most in people and creators is when they're raw and when they're real, no matter how it is. So like they're all super dope in their own ways. Yeah, I f- with all of the vlog squad members. There's not one that like I'm like oh. But don't you have your own? Like, you and your crew. In a way, yeah. As much as I just want to be this little fucking vlog squad member, my friends are amazing. And Tana Turn 21, shooting that with MTV was, like, very cool because I got to, like, show to the world. I don't know, like, how special I think my friends are. Like, let them see that in a lot of ways and just in general. You have I good friends. friends. They're amazing. I, they're My friends really are, like, my family. Like, you know what I mean? I'm very much... 
a firm believer in like blood isn't always you know thicker than water or whatever the fucking phrase is like i you can make your own family you know what i mean and that's what my my best friends really are for me like amari and ashley i would like die for they're your family but 100 with these people do you have to have a guard up because there's still the potential of being used. I have the most immense, insane guard up, and I always think it's, like, as high as possible, and then it's, someone's always f***ing me over left and right. And off camera, I know. Tana not crying about something shocking. Um, but I have a really crazy guard up. I don't really trust anyone, and even when I do, it's, like, I've just been fucked over too many times. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's never, like, fully. But Amari and Ashley are kind of the exceptions. I look at them, and I'm like, like, if they f*** me over, I, I, I wouldn't even know how to deal with the heartbreak. Like, I, I see myself, like, being buried beside them. You know? I don't know. What's been the hardest part of this whole journey? The hardest part of this whole journey? Um, I don't know. That's hard. Realizing, like, most people won't ever really, like, understand you in a lot of ways and kind of finding people that you have that, like... Jordan always says, like, cosmic. You know what I mean? Like... That, like, I can look at you and you know what I'm thinking connection. Like, weeding out those people, that's hard. Because it's a world of so many people pretending to be your friend, pretending to think you're funny, being yes people, trying to use you. Like, just so much dark I guess, like, finding the light, like, in all of it is the hardest part? Question mark? I don't f***ing know. Beautifully said. Well, she's artsy. <laughs> I love you. Tana Mojo? You're way too nice to me, Zach, saying... I love you. Uh, I love you. You're really, a, you're really a great person. You're a f***ing icon. You know, Shane told me you were going to be a special person. I'm here for it. I'm going to cry the whole car ride home. I can't Shut handle up. it. I'm serious. Are you going to Life like, is Beautiful? I am, actually. And I am... Fashion Week was, like... And the VMAs in New York was so dizzy for me. Dizzy's my word right now. Just... Are we going to make this into something? Is there a merch item for it yet? I don't know. There probably should be, but, like, Dizzy's just, it's it encapsulates everything right now for me. Like, just a slightly negative connotation, but just, like, Dizzy. dizzy. Like, life is beautiful is about to be f***ing Dizzy. Like, yeah. I don't want to experience Dizzy. Like, what is, what I, I like, I want to know, but I don't want to like, know. Like, you know, just when you have a drunk night and you make a few questionable decisions, like, you were f***ing Dizzy. You know what I mean? Like, wow. I... It fits anything, though. Like, do if we, someone has an outfit I don't like, I'm like, damn, their outfit's kind of dizzy. Like, just anything. Do we vlog these dizzy nights, or is there, like, no camera moments? Oh, my God. I'm bad about that. Like, I'm I'm really bad about that. Like, I've, I want to vlog everything. I'm, like, I could never go on a vacation, and, like, the whole time if I'm not vlogging, like, I'm so guilty. Like, I just want to make everything content. It's almost, like, bad. Well, you know, that's something David suffers from, too. Like, Yeah, we talk about that a lot, kind of. I think he has, like, phantom camera syndrome, where, like, his yeah. hand will just be in camera position the whole time, but there won't be a camera in his hand. Dude, it's so me. It's, like, I just want to document everything online, and it's so, I'm so addicted to my phone. I'm so addicted to vlogging. It's... It's bad. It's actually really bad, and I need to, like, draw a line, but it's just, like, I'm in this place where people, like, care about my life, and while it's so crazy, I want to document every aspect, and, like, I never thought I'd be traveling the world like this. I never thought I'd be hanging out with my idols. I never thought I'd be, like, I never thought I'd have everything at my fingertips, and it's, like, I, I guess I want to share it in a way for, like, the people like me that think that they can't, like, get there. You know what I mean? They think that it's un unobtainable. It's far away. Yeah. Exactly, because, like, I, I was just a regular girl, like, talking to my f***ing iPhone 4 about, like, my day, and, like, here I am now. It's weird, and I want to show people that even though it's, like, seems far away, it isn't, you know? But I definitely get addicted to that, to the content, to putting it all out there. What do you know. represent, Tana Mojo? Wow. Uh, being yourself, telling your story, I guess, at the end of the day. Like, you know, no matter how f***ed up we all are, just... Being confident in who you are, growing as a person from the things that you you go through, that we're all just kind of like living life, and like that's okay. Like not everything has to have a box or a rhyme or a reason or be perfectly right. I don't know. On that note, <laughs> I say thank you, Tana Mojo, everybody. Love you. Love you. You're crazy. I can't believe I just went on your show. I'm gonna seize about this for the rest of my life. You guys are great. Thanks for dealing with me. You're amazing. Hey, beautiful human, thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot, so we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please, subscribe, and uh, notifications, and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.